So, hi everybody. They just showed me how to turn on the microphone, so I think that's a hint that we're supposed to get started. Um, so this is one of the most emotional and enjoyable things I do in a year, and those of you who have been here before know this is the one thing I do from a script. Um, but I just wanted to say what sincerely a pleasure it is today to be here and to celebrate all of, this, all of these leaders. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Tom Tomich. I'm the director of the Agricultural Sustainability Institute at UC Davis. Um, and we're here to celebrate distinguished and distinctive leadership in agricultural sustainability. The Eric Bradford and Charlie Rominger Agricultural Sustainability Leadership Award was established 10 years ago, believe it or not, 10 years ago by the Bradford and Rominger families, and it celebrates the lives of two outstanding people. Eric Bradford, who gave 50 years of service to UC Davis building programs in animal science and agricultural sustainability. And I think it's fair to say that if it were not for Eric, we wouldn't have an agricultural sustainability institute or a sustainable agriculture and food systems major. He was, in many ways, the architect of those two iconic institutions. And my dear friend Charlie Rominger, a fifth generation Yolo County farmer who was a leader in the practice of sustainable agriculture, in many ways he was my mentor in sustainable agriculture, and in farmland preservation, wildlife habitat restoration, and I could go on and on, so many things. So our intention in giving this award is to seek to celebrate the spirit of Eric and Charlie to recognize and honor other individuals who exhibit the really uncommon leadership qualities that they have, work ethic, and the integrity that they epitomized. Um, those all sound like great words. We need more of all of those qualities in the world for all the reasons we're gonna be talking about. So with this award, we recognize that the commitment and progress made by Eric and Charlie in agricultural sustainability carries on through the work of other people, and we hope to inspire future leaders to continue the pursuit of sustainability. So very consciously, we need new styles of leadership, their role models for leadership. We're celebrating other role models of leadership. So inspired by them, we recognize individuals who are able to take the long view, whose work is science-based and also grounded in agricultural reality, who, stay, who, who step outside of conventional thinking and who uh, seek collaboration in all that they do. We welcome the families of Eric and Charlie, and if you could just, families of the Rumgers and Bradfords, these are extended big families. It's good to see you all here again. Um, And one intention of the families and their friends who created the endowment is to reach new generation of leaders, as I've already said, especially students here on the UC Davis campus. So we have a little bit different format, um, reaching a broader audience through uh, many other institutes and centers on campus, and food um, to get students here. A special thanks to the co-sponsors who provided additional funding to support student involvement in today's events. They provided the money for the refreshments along with the Agricultural Sustainability Institute. And um, I just wanted to show them, there are a subset of these here, but just to mention them. They, we also funded a lunch uh, for John, our distinguished speaker, and um, uh, with students and staff of the institute. So the, the centers and institutes that contributed to those uh, uh, to supporting those activities were the Center for Regional Change, directed by Jonathan London, the Policy Institute for Energy, Environment, and Economy, uh, directed by Austin Brown, the John Muir Institute of the Environment, directed by Ben Holton, uh, the Innovation Institute for Food and Health, directed by Jonathan Siegel, and the World Food Center, directed by Hermias Cabrea. And so please give a round of applause for all of those supporters. But you'll notice there are many more sponsors. So some helped with, uh, with financing, but everybody helped to spread the word and to, especially to reach out to students. So I also wanted to thank partners who joined with ASI, 
Um, how often do you see 15 logos all, all together? Um, I think it's also a testament to both Rachel and to John, our speaker. But I just wanted to acknowledge the um, UC Division of Agriculture and Natural Resources and Glenda Humiston, Mark Bell and others are here today, uh, the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences, um, the Center for Environmental Policy and Behavior, directed by Mark LaBelle, the Child Institute for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, directed by Andy Hargadon, the Energy Efficiency Institute, which includes the Center for Water Energy, and Water Energy Efficiency, California Lighting Technology Center, and the Western Cooling Efficiency Center, and Ben Finkelor is the director. Ben is here. Um, the Industrial Ecology uh, Group in Civil and Environmental Engineering, led by Alyssa Kendall, who is here. The Institute for Transportation Studies, directed by Dan Sperling. The Robert Mondavi Institute for Wine and Food Science, led by Andy Waterhouse. The Food Loss and Waste Collaborative, led by Ned Spang. Our Ecology Graduate Group, uh, led by Truman Young, and I think I saw Truman here earlier, and the Geography Graduate Group, led by Robert Hymans. In a moment, when John speaks, you'll understand what all those centers and institutes have in common. So this is our ninth time giving this award, and each year we seek someone from across the University of California family. I'm, I'm really pleased to see past recipients here. Kelly Garbach, who was the first winner, is, is here, and David Lew David's right here. David Lewis won two years ago. Um, and I've already mentioned John Foley's name. I'll be introducing him in just a few minutes, but to welcome John Foley as our distinguished speaker today. Um, and in this part of the program, really to focus on Rachel Long. So she is this year's re recipient of the Eric Bradford and Charlie Rominger Agricultural Sustainability Award. And I'll say much more about her in just a moment, and I'll be joined up here by Glenda in a moment as well. But Rachel and John each are working to create tangible, constructive, large-scale solutions to some of our biggest challenges in food and agriculture. And we're really delighted that you're both here to celebrate with us. And before I shift to the introduction for Rachel, I just also wanted to notice that, or to note that today is Charlie Rominger's birthday. Always fell during cherry season, and Charlie always came out and picked up a box of cherries from my family. And I was in the cherry part of the orchard yesterday, and there, there's not one cherry which it adds to the poignancy. Things have changed for my family. Things have changed in California. But it's also harder to grow cherries in California than it used to be because of climate change and because of invasive pests and diseases. So Rachel, there's so much to say about you. So if you'll bear with me, Rachel has been doing this for a quarter century. So we'll be just be touching a few words per year. <laughs> so Rachel is honored today for providing leadership for, as I said, 25 years to diverse communities grappling with some of the most complex sustainability issues. Rachel joined the University of California as a pest management low input systems advisor. That's an unusual title. For Yolo, Solano, and Sacramento counties back in, may I say the year? Yes. 1992. 1992, she was one of the first sustainable agriculture advisors within UC Agriculture and Natural Resources. And she focused on developing programs to manage pests in field crops with minimal impacts on the environment. So very much on the leading edge of this wave that needs to grow. So she, her studies have documented that hedgerows are important for enhancing beneficial insects, bees and natural enemies, uh, for better biocontrol and crop pollination in field crops with measurable economic results. She also documented that bats and insectivorous birds are important for helping to control key codling moth pests in walnut orchards. Any walnut growers here? I know there are. Do you worry about codling moths? Yeah, I see heads saying yes. Um, Rachel has given hundreds of talks, probably thousands, about the importance of hedgerows on farms. She's conducted and published surveys on how to better reach out to grower communities. And she has 
uh, work to enhance the adoption of hedgerows as well as bat, bird, and raptor habitat on farms, and mentored many, many students, undergraduates and graduates. I know that these are the sorts of things that excited Charlie. He loved this stuff. I also, and you were, I didn't know that you worked with Eric too. Rachel was telling me how meticulous Eric was in, in data recording. This is what I had planned to say. I believe Eric Bradford would have been impressed by her meticulous data collection <laughs> and persistent research. See how we carefully select these people and persistent research spanning decades to document the ecosystem service benefits of native habitats for agriculture. So just a couple more points. I want to link this just a bit to John's presentation regarding Project Drawdown, and you'll hear more about that in a, in a couple of moments. But if you see the Drawdown document, it mentions things like farmland restoration, regenerative agriculture, conservation agriculture. These are all the things that people like Rachel have been doing for a long time. And Rachel, you're in the very forefront of getting that done. Really, thank you. At the time when Rachel started a quarter century ago, these were kind of fringe ideas. Is that a fair thing to say? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now, I'm really hoping this is true, that this work has entered the mainstream. I'm seeing broader adoption of where it's getting recognized, even though we should have recognized you a long time ago. And to support those claims, so the UC Integrated Pest Management Statewide Program Guidelines now incorporate the value of habitat planting on farms for enhancing pollinators and natural enemies for biocontrol of pests. So we're making progress. The California Healthy Soils Initiative and Natural Resource Conservation Service have cost share funding for hedgerows. Who would imagine for hedgerows, Rachel? Uh, for establishment on farms for pest management and carbon sequestration. So, Glenda, would you join me? Because I think I, I can say for both of us, we are so proud to recognize Rachel Long and a US, UC Cooperative Extension Advisor, and we're grateful for all she does. And in case you don't know, Glenda is the Vice President for UC Agriculture and Natural Resources. So, did you want to... Yeah, just to uh, come on up. Thank you. I, I just wanted to uh, say that um, for, for, for many of us out there, I, I think maybe I'm saying something you already know. Um, the U.S. is a very innovative place, and in my mind, a couple of the biggest innovations we ever did that, that the whole rest of the world looks at and wants to replicate is the land-grant university, which we're sitting in a very, very accomplished one right here, and next up, cooperative extension, the idea of tying our public universities through people like Rachel and David and others in the audience to folks out in the field so that hand in hand, cooperatively, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we find the solutions to the problems that are out there. And, and I can't think of a, a better example of a cooperative extension advisor than Rachel Long. And this mm -hmm. award is so well deserved. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The script says photo opportunity. Well, just overwhelmed and, uh, and, and just delighted. Thank you all for being here. And, uh, you know, it's just such an incredible honor and privilege to, uh, to receive this award. And part of it is its recognition from my colleagues. And isn't it just the best when you just get recognized from, from people that you work with and respect? So that is really, really um, touching. Um, but more than that, um, that it's also from, uh, from uh, Charlie Rominger and Erica Bradford. And, and actually, I worked with both these extraordinary people uh, way back when in the, uh, in the early 90s. And both of them truly helped to, uh, to shape my career. <clears throat> um, for uh, Charlie Rominger, you know, he was just amazing and inquisitive and, and just had this uh, incredible curiosity. And, uh, 
And I remember when we were at a Farm Bureau meeting together and, uh, and, uh, and it was, we were talking about land use policy and, uh, and Charlie said, you know, I think hedgerows are just so important for attracting beneficial insects for pest control in, in adjacent crops. And I just remember thinking, gosh, that is so neat. I was hired as a pest management advisor. And so how could you really like modify the landscape to favor beneficial insects over, over pest insects? And then how, what, how well could that, could that work for, uh, for providing uh, biological control? And so I uh, worked in this area for about uh, 20 years and, uh, and found that, wow, Charlie was right. You know, that, uh, wow, he, uh, he actually uh, knew that, uh, you know, that through his just incredible power of observation that, uh, that these hedgerows of flowering plants around farms were incredibly important for bringing in natural enemies to help out with uh, controlling pests. But more than that, they also, we found that they're really important for attracting in pollinators. So if you have different flowering plants like, you know, elderberry or California lilac planted around farms, you also get a lot of native bees that come into these systems and they're really important for, uh, for pollination. And in particular, you know, like a year like this year where it's just been really cold and, and wet outside and uh, the honeybees just aren't working quite as well, you know, because they don't like it out there in the cold, but our native bees are more resilient and they're out foraging early in the morning and even when it's cold and you're walking around and you have a, you know, like a, a down jacket on and they're out there working. So we found that, uh, that actually planting field edge habitat around farms brings in both the beneficial insects, your natural enemies, your ladybugs, your parasitoid wasps, and also your native bees. And you do get a little bit better pest control and a little bit better pollination when you have habitat on your farm versus if you don't. And we've further gone on to, to find that uh, both birds and bats also benefit from habitat on farms. And, and birds are, are great insectivores, as are bats. You know, they, uh, they're foraging around and they're eating a lot of the, uh, the insect pests. And, uh, and then um, also the, uh, the habitat around field edges is important for you know, providing uh, um, clean water, for filtering our water, trapping uh, pesticides and uh, nutrients and, and such. And, uh, and certainly carbon sequestration. So, so all this biodiversity is incredibly important and we benefit from a tremendous amount of the uh, ecosystem services. And, uh, and I think that you know, we need to continue to work in this area and rather than thinking about like nature is out there in the park, so it's there and then we're here, but rather to really look for ways to embrace nature, to bring it in into the forefront and to, uh, to be able to, to add more resilience and rely on this for some of our ecosystem services. So for example, like, you know, maybe you'll see a bat flying around and, you know, right around you and rather than hysterically screaming, no, no, don't get caught in my hair, just think, well, maybe it's there and it's feeding on a mosquito and maybe it's going to protect you from West Nile virus, um, you know, and embrace it, like encourage, put up a bat house, you know, and uh, attract in bats, use that as an educational opportunity, you know, that, um, that if, you, if you have bats and, you know, put up your bat house and then share with people, like these bats are good, you know, they do eat insects, they're important, and they, you can let people know they do, of course, have rabies, but use it as a teaching tool, you know? <laughs> Don't touch them and vaccinate your animals, and you're not gonna have trouble with rabies. And uh, so, you know, so there's lots of ways that we can really, you know, embrace these, uh, the, just the, the wildlife around us for a win-win situation. And, uh, and I have to mention another little story, and that was, um, the, I don't know if you guys have seen, like, mud dauber nests, the little mud daubers that make these little, like, little mud tunnels, like, around buildings. And, uh, and I know a lot of people just, they go, oh, it looks so bad, it looks so ugly. But, but take a close look. One time I actually broke one open and it was packed full of like 200 black widow spiders. And these things, these mud darbo wasps are actually important. They are helping to control the, these, uh, these spiders. And, and a friend of mine, I was telling this to a friend of mine whose family farmed uh, out in the uh, De Yolo area, and she said, oh, my dad knew that all along. She said he used to keep a little drippy faucet out back so that the mud daubers had the perfect mud consistency to make these mud tunnels, you know, to, uh, to basically then 
than actually hunt these black widow spiders. And she said, we never had any black widow spiders. But I'm sure you guys are thinking, well, then she had wasps, right? <laughs> but, uh, but actually, um, these wasps, they're not, they're not, um, they don't protect a hive, so they're not going out and stinging you. And, they're, and instead, they're, they're, uh, they're incredibly beneficial and, uh, and solitary, so they're not out to get you. So, um, you know, so, so I think that uh, we, as our population grows, you know, we all need to look for ways to, to embrace nature. Uh, it's incredibly beneficial for us through these ecosystem services, whether it's pest control or with, uh, with pollination. And also, my goodness, it provides a place for wildlife to live as well. So you got to, you know, if you got uh, bats, they have a place to live and then you get uh, pest control. So it's kind of a win-win a situation. So in this, uh, in this uh, journey of you know, receiving this award, uh, I have so many people really to thank. And, uh, um, and it's just been uh, just amazing to, uh, to work with all of you, with my colleagues. I see Mary Kimball, you know, she was the first uh, hedgerow queen working on these projects, establishing them back in the uh, 90s. And, and so many of you that, uh, that uh, over the years, my colleagues have really, really uh, helped out and uh, collaborated and come up with ideas. So I almost feel that this is really more of a group award, you know, than than just uh, my recognition. Um, but also, uh, students, you know, it just is uh, amazing. I've really loved mentoring and uh, and sharing, and you know, going out and working on farms together. Uh, I've really enjoyed. Um, Working with uh, with all our field assistants, you guys are everything. I mean, just you know, collecting that data together and processing it, and of course, uh, of course, uh, my family, my husband David here, and uh, and and also, you know, I think I'm most uh, also not most, of course, because my family is most, but um, but I'm thankful to have worked with an incredible group of uh, of farmers in this community. And, and I'm so grateful and feel so privileged to have been able to work with so many farmers, uh, the Romingers and, uh, and others, Dan Hurdy, I know there's several of you here. It, it, um, it, I know this is your livelihood and, and to open up your doors, it'd be like me opening up my home and saying, come on in. And so it's been an incredible honor and privilege to, to have been able to work with you guys and, and the generosity that you've shared in, in really working together for developing some, uh, some solutions to some of these uh, challenging problems. So, um, so just wanted to say thank you. This is really, truly an honor. And, uh, and I just feel you know, really starry-eyed up here, <laughs> having all of you here to, uh, to share in, uh, in this award. And my staff also uh, from my office. Um, uh, thank you for being here. You guys are everything. I mean, you know, you pick up the pieces and, uh, and allow me to, uh, you know, to do focus on my work. So thank you all for, for being here. And uh, gosh, again, thanks again. <laughs>